Welcome to Standing Firm Tribulation Radio, broadcasting the truth in the last days, giving commentary to the latest news, encouraging the faithful remnant through God's Word to help you stand firm. This is a worldwide ministry to all of God's children, of which many are currently undergoing intense persecution while others are facing an onslaught of demonic activity, extreme weather, and catastrophic disasters. We have another great show planned for you today. Every show is meant to bring hope and encouragement to every Christian to stand firm while we wait upon Jesus Christ to return in glory for His church. You're listening to Tribulation Radio. I will live my life praising you. That is what I was born to do. I will live my life praising you, my Jesus, my Jesus. Stay tuned to listen to more Heavenly Music by Paula Dispro. This is Robin Blair, and I am pleased to introduce my husband and radio host, Rev. Daniel Blair, who broadcasts weekly to the faithful remnant living in the last days. Today's broadcast begins an eight-week series on the armor of God. A very important part of being prepared spiritually for the end times is being dressed in and utilizing the whole armor of God for Satan will be extremely powerful and even more deceptive because he knows that his time is short. Therefore, it is necessary to lay a foundation in Jesus Christ so that we can engage the enemy. Without a firm foundation, it would not only be futile but disastrous. Let me remind you of a story of when some Jews attempted to drive out an evil spirit in the name of Jesus that turned nearly fatal. One day the evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know, and I know about Paul, but who are ye? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. Acts 19.15 So before we go any further, It is absolutely essential that you know that you are born-again believer in Christ Jesus. It may be necessary to reevaluate your theology on which you hang your beliefs to ensure that you have properly laid a foundation on which to stand firm. You might be asking why I must engage the enemy. It is apparent from Scripture that he is already engaging you, and if you do not learn how to stand firm against them, then you will live a defeated life. You will suffer the consequences. Clearly, Satan's mission is to destroy the church and to convince you that you have no need of it, that you are quite capable of standing alone on your own spiritual journey. Friends, this is a lie of the devil, because once he separates you from the church, then his mission is to cause chaos in your life and to attack you at every weak point you will soon discover that it is Satan or his henchmen that can cause doubt, confusion, anxiety, depression, fear, and even temptation to sin. It is he that can bring forth evil thoughts, such as thoughts of suicide or cast you into a bed of sickness. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Ephesians 6.12. Furthermore, Satan can use structures, traditions, and institutions in the world for his evil purposes. This has become quite evident throughout history that traditions and evil institutions have caused spiritual bondage, slavery, and mass murder. 
It is clear from Romans 13 that the social, political, judicial, and economic structures were meant to be a minister of God to keep lawlessness and all manner of evil in check. Therefore, God's holy children were advised to be subject to those in authority. Yet, by the time we get to Revelation 13, it is evident that these same institutions have become demonic while the state has become an ally of the devil. Because of this, we must keep reminding ourselves that our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the powers that are behind much of what we see in the world today. For the most part, they have been taken captive to do the will of Satan to wreak havoc in the world. It is up to the church as God's new society to question the standards and values of contemporary society, challenge them, and demonstrate a viable alternative. At the same time, we must continue to bring our fight to the real enemy that stands behind the evil in our world, who is manipulating and using those in power to accomplish his purpose. Obviously, we cannot stand on our own strength. We are very small and insignificant in our struggle against one who is so powerful. So why are you called to join the battle? Evidently, the first reason is we are being attacked, which could give us reason enough to throw ourselves completely into the fray. Secondly, we are members of God's holy church and a fellow citizens of the kingdom that's under siege by Satan himself. To stand shoulder to shoulder with our fellow brothers and sisters in our struggle against the enemy will not only bring relief to ourselves, but will help deliver those caught in the snare of the devil. It will put the enemy to flight as God's kingdom steadily advances to every corner of our world. This is not a fight that you can ignore. If you do, it will leave you as a wobbly Christian with no stability, having no foothold in Christ, making you easy prey for the devil. It will also put you in constant danger of being indoctrinated with the many false doctrines and heresies sweeping our planet. It's time to join the battle and take your stand. So, how do we stand against such a powerful enemy? The Bible says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Ephesians 6.10 When we are faced with such a monumental task of waging war against Satan himself, then we need to take stock of whatever resources we have at our disposal. The battle belongs to the Lord. It is initially His battle from the beginning, long before man was created. God has used His people to defeat the devil down through the ages, giving them great power and strength seen as miraculous. Jesus Christ withstood all the devil's temptations and went on to defeat him at the cross of Calvary. There is great power in the Godhead to bring the devil to his ultimate destruction. This mighty power created the universe, condemned the world in the time of Noah, brought down kingdoms and raised the dead. It's this power that's available for engaging the enemy. We access this power in Christ to strengthen the inner man with determination and courage necessary for spiritual warfare. I will be right back after 30 second station break. Are you prepared to stand firm against wars, plagues, pestilence, and every manner of catastrophe? Are you prepared to stand firm against the devastating natural disasters taking its toll on humanity? Are you prepared to stand firm against all the mental and psychological problems plaguing our planet? Are you prepared to stand firm against horrifying persecution and imprisonment for your faith? I'm so convinced we're living in the last days that I'm offering Stand Firm, a beautiful hardcover edition with an incredible discount available on my secure website through PayPal. It must be reminded that any attempt to stand in our own strength will end in failure. We have no sufficient strength of our own. Our natural courage is as perfect cowardice and our natural strength as perfect weakness. But all our sufficiency is of God. As we learn total dependence on God by not trusting in our own strength, then we are ready to put on the whole armor of God. Let it be said here that picking and choosing which piece of armor we wish to put on will not do and will never allow us to stand firm. It will be essential to put on every piece of armor. The Bible says, put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Ephesians 
To stand firm against his assaults, you will use multiple pieces of armor at the same time. For example, if you're struggling with evil thoughts put into your mind by Satan, then you could use simultaneously the breastplate of righteousness by walking in righteousness before the Lord, guarding your eyes and ears, focusing your mind onto the holiness of God and all that is pure. You would raise up the shield of faith to remove any doubt thrown at you by the devil and to believe God's promises that you will not be tempted beyond what you can handle. You would take up the sword of the Spirit to rebuke the devil by quoting an appropriate scripture from God's holy word. Finally, you would bend your knee in all prayer to ask for God's grace to stand firm against the devil's attacks. So you see, it is not just one piece of armor that comes into play, but many of the pieces working together to help you repel the evil thought and instigated by the devil. Although it is clear that the devil can instigate the thought in your mind, you have the power from God to rebuke the thought and replace it with something very beautiful. A thorough knowledge of the enemy and a healthy respect for his ability are a necessary preliminary to victory in war. Similarly, if we underestimate our spiritual enemy, we will see no need for God's armor. We shall go out to battle unarmed with no weapons but our own puny strength, and we shall be quickly and shamefully defeated. The devil can cause many problems for the Christian, so let me encourage you to listen over the next eight weeks as we look into each piece of the Christian armor and how to effectively use it against a most powerful enemy. This is Rev. Daniel Blair, Broadcasting Tribulation Radio, live from Round Rock, Texas. Subscribe today and join a growing number coming out from the fallen brethren and standing firm. This is a closeout inventory sale for all of my books. I am offering them with an incredible discount. Final Warning offers evidence that the beast is already building the global city of Revelation. Stand Firm helps build a solid theological belief system, giving you godly counsel for the last days. Guiding Principles for Biblical Counseling is a very practical book for the layman and professional. Revelation Truth is a collection of all my timeless articles written to help us stand firm. We all know that Jesus Christ came to save the sinner and give them a new life in Him. But what many of us have forgotten is the true nature of sin. Yes, we have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But what is sin? We will all agree to disobey any of His commandments is sin. But how many can you quote? You might say, if I love God and my fellow man, that I have fulfilled His commandments. But don't forget that He has given us over 127 commands in the New Testament alone to show us how to love God and how to love one another. On our own, we cannot obey. But with God, all things are possible. Not only has He promised to save us, but give us the ability to obey all of His commandments and trust Him alone. This is all by the grace of God, not by works lest any man should boast. This grace comes through faith, believing in Jesus Christ who is the true Son of the living God, who died, was buried, and raised on the third day, opens a door to a new life in Him. This is a life where all of our sins are forgiven and we are made into a brand new creation where old things pass away. From the very first day we are given the gift of the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us into all truth producing every manner of spiritual fruit. This eternal life misses the sting of death and ushers us into His glorious presence. This free gift is given to those who are called into His kingdom. Dear friend, if you have not yet accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord by placing all of your trust in Him to make you into a new creation and forgive you of all your sins, then you can do that right now in the privacy of your own home. Come to Jesus right now confessing and repenting of your sins, telling Him that you believe that He is the Son of the living God and the only path to salvation, asking Him to take full control of your life as Lord.
Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, help me live for your glory. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, help me live for you. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, help me live for you only. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, help me live for you. You alone are the potter, I am only the clay. In my life, Lord, be honored, Jesus, have your way. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, help me live for your glory. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, help me live for you. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, help me live for you only. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, help me live for you. Help me live for you. Teresa Wiggins has a loving heart for the orphans, the widows, and the poor, and invites you to visit her website and make a tax-deductible donation today for one of these precious children. These are only two of the many hungry and deprived children that could use your help. The little girl and boy are from Uganda, Africa. Make your tax-deductible donation today using the PayPal button. Thank you for your help. Thank you for listening to Tribulation Radio. I pray that God has richly blessed your listening experience. Please help us spread the truth by telling your friends and family about Tribulation Radio. May our God bless and protect you until we meet again. Mm-hmm.